actually took me three takes to get right. <laughs> you know, that's all I can play on the piano. I learned to do that when I was about seven and I've learned nothing since. And nobody would expect me to start playing this, least of all myself. And yet that's exactly what many of us expect when we start drawing. Hi, I'm Stephen Travers. My first top tip for drawing beginners is to start with a simple subject and start with simple expectations. It is much, much more beneficial in the long run to draw simpler things and to draw them well than to choose really challenging, complicated subjects and possibly even complicated materials to draw them with and to struggle with using those materials and, and capturing the subject. There's much more benefit to doing a more modest drawing really well where we learn valuable things and we get encouragement. It may well be that it was a wonderfully complicated architectural scene that inspired us to draw in the first place. And yet that doesn't mean that that scene is the best place to start if I'm a beginner. Often there's a whole lot more advantage in choosing a simpler subject where we have less to think about all at once. And it can be much more productive in our drawing development to produce a simpler drawing in a simpler way where we can learn more things more quickly. Because we love architecture, it's easy to understand how we're carried away in wanting to draw really grandiose things. But it's just not helpful and it's, it's helpful to leave those subjects till a little bit later when we can do them better. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is always good to push ourselves a little bit and always tackle things that really challenge us. And that certainly is my experience too as I began to draw people and cars and things that I, I felt I couldn't draw. But again, even in those things, we want to be realistic about pushing ourselves. So that's the first point. Keep it simple. Now, after each of my top tip for drawing beginners, I'm going to also give you, just as a bonus, a technique tip. And this is something more, more directly uh, applying to actual drawing practice. Okay, so there's a bonus because, because hopefully there's a lot of beginners watching this. I thought that would be a helpful thing to do. So there's a, a, there's a technique tip between every top tip and there's also one at the end as well. So the very end after I say goodbye. So stay for that as well. Okay, let's go. When our subject is very busy and there are a lot of objects drawn, it can be very helpful to do a part of it with a lighter touch both in the line we use and in the tone we apply. And this helps to separate this object from this object and, and just makes it a little easier for us to decipher, work out what's actually happening. So don't necessarily do the whole drawing with the same touch. My second top tip for drawing beginners is to practice the things that you want to get better at. Now, this might sound obvious, but it doesn't seem to be when I look and see what people are doing. Think to yourself, what sort of drawing do I want to be doing in six months time, in 12 months time, in a year's time, in five years time? Where do I want my drawing to go? Well, start practicing in a way that will lead me towards those goals. Practice now the things that I want to be able to improve and get better at. So what do you want to get better at? Do you want to get better at learning to use pencil with all the wonderful possibilities that pencil lines give with the wonderful variability from bold to soft, uh, from hard to, to light edged, with all the wonderful shading possibilities and the ability to merge from hatching into almost a continuous tone? Or do you want to learn to develop ink and the wonderful boldness that we get with ink lines, the clarity with which we can draw and the beautiful tones that the darkness of ink can bring? Or possibly instead of the ink, are we instead captivated by the possibility of bringing colour into our drawings. With all the possibilities that colour opens up of highlighting areas, of, of breathing life in different ways, of creating focus of attention 
and pushing other areas back of combining with, with darkness and, and, and tone and creating wonderful effects is to be able to work beautifully with color where you would like to be. Or where do you want to draw? Do you want to sit in front of grand architecture or bustling urban scenes and draw whatever's in front of you right then and there with the people all around and the flies and mosquitoes and the, and the sunlight? Is that what you'd like to do? This is the drawing of Notre Dame that I sketched it in my sketchbook in pencil in July 2018. This is the drawing that started me on my urban sketching journey. What a wonderful experience sketching the location is. Or would you prefer to sit in a studio and do a careful, measured, well thought out, complex drawing in a much more uh, considered and permanent media such as ink? Or would you rather sit in a studio but do a more lively, simpler sketch that captures qualities beyond architecture of the actual scene itself? What do you want to be better at doing in the future? How do you want to be doing your drawings in the future? Do you want to use a ruler and get precise straight lines and give your drawings a real architectural drafting feel? Or would you rather learn to draw straight lines freehand and get a more casual relaxed look. Would you like to learn how even to draw long lines freehand, long thin parallel lines, and learn the ways to do that to create a very different effect from a strict architectural drafting feel. Where do you want your line drawing to be in 12 months time? In the future, do you want to be using a process where you use a pencil under drawing to create very precise replicas, very accurate representations of very complex and ornate buildings? Or would you rather be drawing freehand without any pencil, just directly with the ink in a much looser, much more direct style and maybe even not quite as accurate style because that's the sort of finished product, finished drawing that you want to have. Do I want to be copying other artists' drawings or do I want to be creating my own original drawings? It's important to know where we want to finish up because if I practice one thing, it won't necessarily give me the skills that I'll need to develop to be able to do the other well. So we need to make choices in what we do now as to where we want to end up, what's not necessarily just more satisfying or easier right now. Drawing grand architecture often means we have a lot of towers and spires. And when we do that, it's really important that we stack all the various elements of it really, really accurately so that we have a nice straight tower that doesn't look like it's going to fall over and that all the various segments are evenly positioned on the center line. And one way to help me do that is actually to lightly draw in a center line when I'm doing my rough work, I mean, I won't draw a heavy line if I'm drawing directly in ink. If I'm doing pencil, I'll, I'll do it in pencil. If I'm using ink directly, I might do a bit of a dotted line, but it helps me align all the parts as I go up. And that's really important to stay focused on to have a, a, you know, a great tower at the end of the drawing. My third top tip for drawing beginners is we need to learn to observe more carefully. And again, this is so much more important than probably most of you are thinking right now. You see, we can't draw what we haven't seen properly. And most of us are so enthusiastic to actually start drawing that we have a quick look at what our reference is or what's in front of us and we go, yep, I know what that is. And we start to draw. And the problem is, we're drawing what we think we've seen, not what is actually there. And so even if we have the technical drawing skills to draw perfectly what we have in our mind, it's not going to look right because what we have in our mind, unfortunately, is not, has not been observed carefully enough and does not really show what's in our reference. And so our drawing can't succeed 
because of that. What I need to do is I need to learn to look in such a way at my reference that I gather all the visual information that I need that's there and that I need to accurately draw that subject. No wonder drawing sometimes can feel like such an uphill battle and we can't see where we're going wrong because the problem isn't in our drawing skills. The problem is in our observing skills and I haven't learned to see what I need to see to draw what I want to draw. I actually have four videos so far on learning to observe so that I can draw what's there. I need to make sure I improve my observational skills ahead of my drawing skills because without them the other will be on a very shaky foundation. So please learn to invest more time in looking at the reference and really checking to see where everything is before we start to draw. Because of their size, architectural subjects often end up being in the distance of the actual composition. A very effective way of still focusing attention on them is to have a darkened foreground to create in effect a dark frame which channels the viewer's eyes back towards the architectural subject even though it's actually the furthest object away. This can seem to be working in this drawing of the Basilica of Sacré-Cœur in Montmartre where the tourists and the alleyway that these tourist shops are in catch the shadow of the afternoon and channel the viewer's attention up towards the church. We can see it operating slightly differently in St Paul's Cathedral in London where this view from the side looking towards St Paul again the whole drawing is in fact in shadow but this darker shadow in the front and this bridge-like structure here focuses the viewer's attention through it and, and the looming tower behind ends up being very dominant. And I particularly like this example of the former Paris Opera House, the Palais Garnier, where the two sides of the street in the avenue leading up to it and the street between them and particularly these pedestrians, these cars and these lamps, street lights and other street furniture items in darkness in effect create this this dark u-shape and again it focuses attention on the uh, opera building that rises behind my fourth top tip for drawing beginners is to review every drawing and by that i don't mean some complicated academic process i just mean look at the drawing and say am i happy with this have have I got it right? Does anything stand out that's particularly wrong? Or is there anything I was trying to do that I don't think I've managed to achieve? Or equally, is there anything I'm really happy with? Because it helps us focus for our next drawing. And there are lots of things we consider. I mean, we can certainly consider the technical accuracy of the drawing. Is, is the perspective correct? Have I got all my angles going the right way? Does it look right when I look at it? Is the composition good? Does, now that it's all drawn and on paper, does it look balanced? Have I positioned things well? Have I kept things I should have kept and cropped things I should have cropped? Am I happy with how, how the composition looks? Because if I draw a poor composition well, it's still going to be a bit of a dodgy drawing. Am I happy with my line work? Am I happy with my tone work? Have, have I created a good tonal range in the drawing that suits both the subject and the conditions and what I was wanting to achieve. That's a really important one, what I was wanting to achieve. Often in a drawing, there's something that really attracts us that makes us want to draw it. It may be a lot of detail. It may, may be very simple shapes. It may be bold contrast. It may be the contrast between buildings and trees. It may be the bustle of people in the street and the contrast they give with buildings. Whatever it is, did I achieve it? If I have, that's great. If I haven't, what could I do in the next drawing to, to get further along where I want to be? So look at our drawings and ask ourselves, am I happy with this? Where does it work? Where doesn't it work? And where can I focus in the next one? 
Strangely enough, trees are an incredibly useful item to include in architecture drawings. They provide such a wonderful contrast to the straight, hard lines of most buildings. This, this wonderful shaggy shape, and, and not just in outline and in texture, but also in tone. And you can see here how, how the, the, the dark green of the trees really makes the, the sunlight on the church in Paris look even stronger. And I actually exaggerated the darkness on these trees on the left to help push this corner of the church forward to highlight it even more. So don't be afraid of adjusting the tones that, that you have in your reference photo. No one's going to be seeing the reference photo. They're going to be looking at your drawing. So tweak it to make your drawing look as good as you can. My fifth top tip for drawing beginners is to be regular. It's a lot like physical exercise. Doing a small amount of drawing, but doing that frequently is of much greater benefit, I think, to our drawing improvement that spending hours drawing, but not very frequently. We learn a lot more by repetition that's more frequent. And to help with that, have a spot where you can have your drawing things, have them very accessible so there's no trouble to start, so that if you just have 15 minutes, you can be into it right, right away. And to help with that, have your subject matter preferably chosen before your drawing session starts. Try and find something and print it off at some other time of the week and have it ready so that when it's time to draw, you don't spend half the time looking for something to draw. So that's just another little tip. So be regular. Just think of physical fitness and improving your body. It's just like that. A little bit every day, a little bit every few days is going to be the best for your drawing in the long run. It can be very effective to include some quite ordinary street objects in our drawings, particularly in the foreground. So here I've got the corner of the bus stop and the back of this light. It causes the viewer's eyes to roam over the entire subject. And the more movement in the viewer's eyes, not just the more they're going to see, but the more they will come back to the main event of our drawing. Well, I hope those tips were helpful in giving some focus to how to go about drawing. And I hope the technique tips have been helpful as well. There's one more to come now, so don't go away. Have fun. Bye. And this is it. Find a mirror and hold your drawing up and have a good look at it. And what I find is that the reflection flips what you've drawn and it makes it unfamiliar enough that it gets rid of that, that brain fog where we just got used to seeing what we had drawn and, and having got used to it, it was hard to see it objectively. And it gives us, if you like, new eyes, fresh eyes to see what we've drawn as if we were seeing it for the first time, as if we hadn't drawn it. And if we've made mistakes, they appear much more easily to see this way. And I find doing this is particularly good if I've got some of my perspective lines wrong. They're the sort of thing that we can really get used to seeing bit by bit over time as we draw something over a number of hours. But seeing them suddenly flipped, if they're not quite right, it's a lot more apparent. And of course, it's too late for this drawing. But what it lets me do is in my next drawing, it focuses me on the fact that that's something I have to pay particular attention to because I didn't quite get it right last time. And if I pay particular attention to it, drawing by drawing, I will improve. So give this a go. Even if it seems a bit strange, it is worth the effort. And remember, we're not doing it to be self-critical. We're doing it for self-improvement. Okay, give it a go.